Man, there is nothing worse than an electrical problem. Nine times out of 10, you don't even know where to start. But thanks to the KZ and this KM Super Pro 50, we're gonna troubleshoot this thing in no time. So I've been having that electrical problem with the Prelude for quite some time, so I decided to do something about it. Pick this thing up off Amazon. It was like 130 bucks shipped, somewhere around there. The KM50, I'll have a link down in the description. Make sure you click that link, order yourself one of these if you're in the market. And let's talk about what we get in the box. Totally awesome box, man. Check out this phone. Make sure that this thing stays nice and safe in here. We get ourselves the actual device. Nice bright orange with a killer long cord, which is going to work great for the Prelude because you guys know I relocated that battery to the trunk. So we need all the length we can get. Uh, we got ourselves some alligator clips here. We got ourselves some probes in case we want to get through some insulation. Basically everything you need to troubleshoot electrical issues. All right, so step one is to plug the alligator clips into the actual connectors on the probe itself. And there is a plus and a minus. I hope you guys can see that so that you don't reverse these things. So make sure that you're lining up the plus and minus with the connectors and slide them in. All right, next you're gonna to go to wherever your battery is. Put the old red on the red, positive on positive, and negative on negative to give the power probe some juice. So check this out, I went ahead and turned it on and look at that awesome readout we have on this digital screen, super, super cool. So as you guys can see, we're in the engine bay and man, there's still plenty, plenty of cord left, which is great. Cause like I said, my battery's in the trunk on this car. So I need all the length I can get. If you have a traditional setup with the batteries in the engine bay, man, you'll have no issues making this thing work. So we got this thing set up and ready to go. And before we start actually doing some troubleshooting, I want to go over some of the features that this can do as well as what the buttons actually do on the unit itself. All right. So right off the rip, cool thing about this thing it's already telling me battery voltage you can see up there it says battery and it says 12.15 volts and as I've been looking at this it's been ranging it's been going to 12.13 12.14 so it's a it's giving me live readout of what's actually going on with the battery um, down below to these buttons you have three buttons here the one on the left is gonna be for the flashlight if I hold you can see it's already on but if I hold it down it will go off all right and the button all the way to the right is gonna be sound the sound is actually very useful when you're using this thing, but also at times it can be annoying. So if it starts to get annoying, hold it down and then it'll go off. All right. And then now you can see if I go back to my little flashlight button and hold it down, it's no longer beeping and the lights come on. Okay. So to go through the functions of this device, you hit this middle button here, the mode button. I hit that once and you can see here I have VDC. That's going to be voltage DC current. I'm going to push the little down arrow here. You can see it's indicated there on the right button. Now I have voltage AC current. I hit the mode button and it brings me to voltage AC. I go hit the mode button again and I'm back to the menu again. So I could go down to frequency. You could go to duty, fuel injection. You can actually see what the uh, fuel injection duty cycles are. Pretty cool. You get an awesome little graph there. Hit mode again. You could check um, ohm resistance and diode which i don't know what that is <laughs> but anyway this thing can do it so basically if there's anything you need to troubleshoot electrical the km50 is going to handle it okay so let's get back to the issue that i'm having i got a car here with a headlight motor that will not power on the good news is i could do it manually in a pinch but it'd be really nice if this thing kind of worked the way it's supposed to and i'll be totally honest with you i have no idea what the issue is okay so now it could be a bunch of different things it could be the headlight motor it could be a fuse it could be a relay it could be the actual unit that like tells these things to actually go up and down. Um, there could be a number of issues. So instead of just throwing parts at it, which is kind of what somebody who doesn't know how to troubleshoot stuff would do, right? We just start replacing stuff. We replace motors, we replace fuses, we replace relays, just start throwing things at it until we get the result that we're after. We can actually use this, save money and actually find out what the problem is and just replace that certain thing or fix it if it's possible. So what's totally cool about this guy is that it can actually power stuff on. That's right, I can just touch the tip of this and then use this little alligator clip and we can actually make the motor work if the motor actually does work. And I have a feeling it does because it'll go down, it just won't go up. All right, so here's the headlight motor. Here's our headlight, not powered up. And I went ahead and disconnected it from the rest of the wiring harness, okay? So I just have this to play with now. There are a series of wires on here, <laughs> all different colors, all right? But there is one that's black, I believe that's gonna be the ground. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the power probe. Give me one second. 
All right, I went ahead and put the little alligator clip on the black wire, all right? So it's kind of a, a negative connection there. And now with this guy, I should be able to power this thing on. And if this motor is good, this headlight will go up. So now you're probably wondering, hey man, which one of these <laughs> four options left inside here is actually the power to move this up and down? And I could refer to the instruction manual, but you know what? I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna go ahead, give this thing some juice, and see what happens. Now, quick tip, if you're using one of these things, instead of probing to the metal connector and then pushing the up arrow, push the up arrow first and then make the connection. All right, wish me luck. Oh, did you hear that? Something happened. <laughs> How about that for a result? Dude, it worked. Let's see if we can put it down. <laughs> this thing is awesome. All right, so just like that, we were able to prove that our little motor here is actually fine. And this is the most expensive part of kind of the whole system here. So awesome news. We know that this guy is good. We don't have to jump on eBay, try to find a used one because you know Honda's not making this anymore. All right, so the next step of troubleshooting would be to check the fuses and make sure that the fuses are correct. Now, this car is a little complicated to do that on because I relocated everything under the glove box. As you guys can see, there is nothing in this engine bay that resembles a fuse box. It's all been relocated. That could probably be part of the issue with our wiring here too. So that's on me to figure out. I'll use the KM50 to troubleshoot that sometime down the road. And that's part of the reason why I haven't fixed this problem yet, because I don't feel like taking my dashboard apart to get to that fuse box. But I'm gonna show you real quick how to test fuses on my XB. All right guys, here we are on my Siren XB. I got the red hooked up to the positive, the black hooked up to the negative. I got my screen on my power probe, okay? Now to test fuses, all you gotta do is touch the corner of one of these fuses. And look at that, it tells you the voltage and you get the beep. This one, same thing. Now watch when I go to this one. Nothing. Pretty interesting, huh? Let's go to the next one, 30. I got a beep. That tells me there's something wrong with this fuse. Let's go ahead and remove it and take a look at it. All right, it's gonna be really hard for you guys to see, but under further inspection, this fuse is actually blown. So the power probe helped us figure out that, hey, this is a bad fuse. Now, luckily, I have a spare right here. Pull this guy out, put him in its place, just like that. Now let's test it. Hey, we're back in business. So that's really the extent that I will actually be using this since I'm a novice mechanic, man. I'm gonna be testing fuses, I'm gonna be testing powers, I'm gonna be testing grounds. I'm gonna be going ahead and using a tool to power things on and off so that I can go ahead and narrow down what's actually wrong with the vehicle. But if you are an actual true mechanic, man, this thing can really save you a lot of time underneath someone's hood because it can do so much more than what I just showed here in the video. Go to Amazon and check out the description there. KZ has a big lowdown of information on everything that this thing can do. So that about does it for the KZ KM50. If you guys are in the market, like I said, go down to the description box, give it a click, pick yourself up one off Amazon, get shipped to you in like 24 hours, man, this thing came super quick. Super cool tool, and also keep in mind that this isn't something that you have to have only if you're a mechanic or you're a novice mechanic like myself. This is something that you could use to just educate yourself as to what could possibly be wrong with your car, and then you could take it to a mechanic with a better idea of what the job will be, because you will already know what the issue is if you don't want to fix it yourself. So that's gonna do it for me on this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit that like button, please subscribe. I got a lot more work to do on this Prelude to figure out why that stupid headlight won't power on. But the good news is, is I know it's not the headlight motor. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time, later.